Hello, welcome to the next edition of Competitive List. I got six decks that got a 5-0, and one of the decks really just is my is me to a T. So I'm super excited about definitely talking about the last list, but we have five other lists, one of which is my specialty list that I'm gonna be uh, that I've featured probably really soon on the channel. I also wrote an article for it. But I'm I'm questioning if I should keep it. Um, just due to the pure nature that I think people in my Discord and when I asked so far on YouTube about the what they think about my what you know what list what decks I play on my specialty list they actually like and so far no one's really loved Tick Tick so I don't know we'll find out but we're gonna be talking about our sixth list for Pioneer let's get into it and uh, and then uh, if you any of these lists that you like actively make sure you let me know in the comment section. Because I'd be more likely to try them out through a league or for a video. But let's get into it. So first on my list is Mono Red Goblins for Pioneer. So we have Scamp, Charger, Loyalist. Uh, it's interesting to see Loyalist back into the rotation. Uh, for a while, it, it's kind of been like pushed out of the format. We have four Skirk Prospectors too. So we have a lot of one drops. Four Snoops, four Battle Cries, four... Uh, Road um, Horde Master. Then we have a Hoblin Goblin. So we have Reckless Bush Bushwhacker 2. So we have like every single best quality goblins other than Chain Waller. Uh, surprisingly, it's not in the board either. Oh, there's one in the board. So I guess that's fine. I guess in theory, there's no else really in the format. Because honestly, Besides Amalia, green isn't really res isn't really represented in the format. So, yeah. Uh, so maybe Goblin uh, Chain Ward down here is not really needed. But we also have a random Squee in the main board. Uh, maybe that should just be a uh, Chain Waller. But still, this list is pretty sweet. Got a 5-0. We have a Ruins, Cavern, Castle, and Brith. So it's pretty sweet. Three Monstrous Rages to help boost our threats. Get through lots of damage. Then sideboard, we have Rending Volley for the the Amalia matchup. Cinder Maw, a dinosaur, surprisingly, for the Amalia matchup. And then we have uh, two Ring Ring Leaders for the grinding matchups against Control. Stuff like that, where you kind of want to get a extra Goblins after a bunch of Rafts and removal. And Frenzy for Shieldred. Uh, Hearse for Graveyard Hate. Chandra for grinding matchups. Chain Waller for small creatures like Voke. And then we have expertise for the bigger chunky threats, like Gruel Boat, stuff like that. So even though Gruel, I don't think, is really a top tier deck anymore as much. But still, we have options to sideboard in to hit that matchup. That is Mono Red Goblins. Let's get into the next list. So next on my list is Just Guy Ascendancy. Of course, we got the combo with Emery, Mox. So we can loop it with Just Guy Ascendancy. To keep untapping the Emery, recasting another Mox Amber, get infinite mana. We have Archaeologist to help dig for our Just Guys Ascendancy, Portable Hole for a little bit of interaction, three Treasure Cruises to get rid of the cards we don't really need, draw more cards, turn through our deck, a uh, single Strangle for a little bit extra removal for one mana, because we, we, we do only want to be very mana efficient, because we need to get our resolve our like, Just Guys Ascendancies, our combo pieces. That's more critical than trying to interact with the opponent. We're trying to end the game by turn four. So we have four considers for a little bit of card draw selection. Helix helps uh, set up our combo finishes. Uh, we don't necessarily play um, the uh, the untapping dude, Rona, our girl. But, you know, we still to be able to, with Just Guy Sentency, Helix, and some other creatures should be able to combo. Two C Healy's. For making tons of little one ones that get huge, then we have desk for kind of a you know early game net two cards kind of card. Um, also, it gets Brock. No, I guess it can't because it's not casting. Sideboard, we have three volleys for the Yamalia matchup, spirit stuff like that. One spell pierce to protect our Jess guys' ascendancy because Leyland Binding is a decent card in certain certain decks. We have Surge of Salvation for the Rakdos matchup. Just got uh, just a strike kind of answers most of the most played creatures. Um, so it's kind of like a two mana doom blade. A single 
destroy evil to get fat creatures or enchantments. Another strangle for the aggro matchups. Vulture Stance to help protect our Emery. We have a Mentor, which is a alternative way to just, you know, quote, quote, pump our team really fast. Make a bunch of tokens. We have Bank Buster for the grinding matchups. A single dispute for the control matchup. That is Jess Guy Ascendancy for Pioneer. Let's get into the next list. So next on my list is the deck that technically I used to have in my uh, portfolio of specialized lists, but I ended up dropping it because I just could not get the deck to perform. Of course, I went a teamer just because I love teamer more than is it, but you know, um, it did put up a 5-0 result. Um, this deck, of course, plays Swifty, Code Breaker, Spirit, uh, Sprite Dragon, pretty decent cards, and a Balmore, which maybe is the card I should have considered for my list. Uh, it does do a decent job at pumping my team, also giving him Trample. And then we have a Play With Fire, Sleight of Hand, Behind the Mask, which is an interesting card that I never tried, and Shore Up to help protect a threat. Then we have Rage to help close the game out. And then Kamuno. I guess they technically cut the um, Soul Scar Mage for Kimono. Maybe that's correct. Um, it, I mean, it doesn't really help that. You know, um, Soul Scar Mage doesn't have haste. Everything else in this deck does, in fact, have haste. So that may be a key, a key thing other than Balmore, of course. Our mana base is pretty sound, right? We have a couple utility lands with Ottawara, Din, and Sakasan. But, you know, that's essentially that's it. We have two in the festivities with the Convoke matchup. And Fading Hope to get through um, some, some medium-sized threats. Three volleys for the Amalia matchup, Spirit, stuff like that. Single Alpine Moon, because we don't need that much against Lotus Field. We're kind of favored already. And a Spell Pierce also helps against Lotus Field. Um, especially since we probably want to cut stuff like Shore Up, potentially, because they don't really interact with us all that much. And Shore Up, additional Shore Up for the uh, mid-range matchups, control matchups. We have Dispute for the control matchups. We have three Rampaging Ferocidons for the Amalia matchups. So that is our is it prowess for Pioneer. We got three more decks to cover. Make sure, like I said, make sure you sma let me know down in the comment section which deck of these you guys enjoy the most. And let's get into the next. So next on my list is Angels. Now, typically they don't really get a lot of new cards. They haven't gotten a new card in a while. But this person has decided to try Case of the uneaten feast which basically is a you know an approve a johnny's welcome but if you gain five life you could basically it turns into you could sack it any point you want and then start casting a bunch of creatures from your graveyard this is quite nice against like sweepers like supreme verdict stuff like that so it does give you a little bit of extra reach while also gaining life and we also have luminarch veteran um so basically we, we cut the elves and picked up this package which means we're a little bit slower, so it's a lot harder to get underneath Lotus Field, which is why I like the the, the Elves, right? But it makes sense. This also gives you more resiliency against your other worst matchup, which is Control. And plus, you gain more life to help Sprock Resplendent uh, Angel. You also, we also play the Youthful Valkyrie. I don't typically play that in my list, but this is definitely a deck that I've had some success with uh, in general, like I just this is the only deck that I've ever fight up five owed with is Angels, and uh, so, so it does have a little bit of place in my heart just because it is that deck. Um, Coco, of course, with Cable's Reconstruction is just extra grindiness. It looks like we're only playing two. Uh, yeah, I don't see I see two Cable's Reconstructions here and here, so clearly this deck doesn't value that as much. But, you know, that's fine. Sideboard, we have two Deafening Silences. It helps against Lotus Field, also against Phoenix. Potentially Rest in Peace for Phoenix. Holes for Aggro decks. We have an extra Skyclave for Aggro decks. We probably want to trim back on some of the more useless cards, like um, in that particular matchup. We probably don't need the case against Aggro. Um, so that's probably something. We have two Peacekeepers. Um, we're probably going to trim back on Valkyrie or something like that. Just because, and uh, Archon of Amiria, also good against Phoenix and Lotus Field. 
We have two Redanes, um, decent against Control, also against Lotus Field, and against Rakdos Sacrifice. If you honestly are ever worried about your chunky fat things ever getting pinged by a Mayhem Devil, so I don't really see that one as necessary. We have one uh, Welcome against Rakdos Midrange, which is for grinding matchups. That is Selesnia Angels. I think this deck is actually becoming, is pivoting to an actual good place right now. Um, typically, this deck does have a decent matchup against Phoenix. We can clock up the board quite well with Flyers, and our, th our threats are much bigger than theirs, typically. And we gain a lot of life, excessive amount of life. So, like, our worst, this worst matchup for this deck, of course, is Control. And Control is kind of on the dip right now. So, this might be a good time, to, if you like Angels, to try it. But we have uh, two more decks. And uh, the next one is going to be one of my specialties that I am highly debating about. If I, I'm guessing if I should keep it or not. Just because it seems like it's not as liked. So, we'll see. Let's get into it. So, the deck that I kind of like, but... It doesn't seem to go very over well with the community. Is Boros Heroic. This this version plays four tent districts, four illuminators, four uh, Swifties, four hoplites, and two code breakers. My list, I cut one tent district to up my protection spells in the main board. Um, just because Rakdos technically is one of the most played decks. And Phoenix, right? Both of those have a lot of interaction. So I do actively want that in my list. So I think cutting one 10 district Legionnaire. And I like the two, three split between that. Of course, it has a very similar approach. It has Reckless Rages that I typically play. Anger, um, Strike. Like Simon, though, uh, this version is not. I have actually switched and I put Lauren's Escape in the main and then two Gods Willing in the board. It's nice to be able to technically, you know, win against Amalia. So that's quite nice to be able to force a draw in with the Lauren's Escape plus Defiant, Defiant Strike. So I kind of made that switch. And uh, that's, so I have two, I, I usually play two Gods Willing now on the side. But two Rest in Peace, pretty stock, get lost. That's a couple copies, pretty good against Shieldred, stuff like that. One Light of Hope because it hits enchantments, gains life, also can put a counter on it. So if you don't really have a target, you know, you still get to gain or put a counter on it. Then we have Hushbringer to stop um, potential, I don't want to say Atroxa because it's not really a thing. Except for Neoform. But, there, you know, there's some decent ATB trigger creatures that you kind of just want to shut off. Or even die triggers because it also hits dying triggers, which actually comes up. Then we have two Case of the Crimson Pulse for a little bit of extra card draw. Um, this deck is playing a total of five extra card draw pieces with Showdown of the Skulls in Case. Uh, ironically, I just, I, thought, I just now remembered, the Hushbringer technically came up with Angels. Uh, our, my opponent was on Bogles, played Hushbringer, and I was wondering why I wasn't getting my... Um, um, you know, the priest triggers when my angels were dying to get spirits. That was because of Hushbringer. So that's why I know that H Hushbringer shuts that off. Because um, it was recent. So it's kind of ironic I talk about both of those decks um, in the same video. But that is Boris Heroic. What are your guys' thoughts about Boris Heroic? Do you like it? Because um, like, I am really am debating. It doesn't seem to get any upvotes in my community. The, the ones that are us to me on YouTube or in my Discord. Um, if you're wanting to get in my Discord, the link is in the description. I haven't said that in a while for a video, but join it if you like, because uh, I would like it to, more community input on what decks I feature on the channel would be desired. Let's get into the last list, which is what I'm excited for, and let's get into it. So one of the decks that I have really enjoyed as of late was Gruel Ramp. Now, this deck does have a lot of overlap, this deck is playing uh, Elvish Rejuvenator, which I don't play, but I do play Sylvan Carry Added. I do play um, Glimpse the Core. I do play, I think, three of the Beanstalks because it's a really good card in this current meta, especially against like Rakdos and Phoenix. Um, we're able to get a lot of chunky threats down. This deck plays Titan of Industry. I play a, a Tarka, 
but that's like a slight niche difference. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they they don't play a full play set of Cavalier. They don't. I only see two. <laughs> they also play three O's of Nessus, which is a pretty reasonable card in the deck. So I, that is a little bit interesting that they do not play that many of them. They play three Cityscape Levelers and an Emrakul and an Ulamog. So they don't play Ugin, which I typically like to just because I've been a huge fan of Ugin as a creature. And then of course they play Gruff Tri Triplets, which I typically play like the Hydra because it cut ETBs and gets a land, puts it in play tapped. But this deck also tries to play uh, Nykthos, which I'm kind of curious about because like it doesn't seem like we could, other than Griff Triplets, it's pretty difficult for this deck to actually get a decent devotion count. So, um, if you're the creator of this deck, please let me know down in the comment section how this deck is panning out for you. Clearly, you're getting five O's with it. But other than Griff Triplets, I just don't see a need to play Nekthos. Um, I typically, I don't play it anymore just because um, it just, to me, it just doesn't, it's not my thing. But then, of course, we have Titan of Industry, which gains life, puts a chunky blocker in the way, stuff like that. Sideboard, we have four Phoenix uh, Cages for the Phoenix matchup, which is pretty decent. Three Warping Whales as a way to fight through sorceries, um, counter them, also can deal with small threats. Additional up the Beanstalk for the control matchup. We have two Frill bat, uh, Backs for um, Graveyard Hate, Life Gain against Aggro, and also can destroy artifacts and enchantments. Two Thought Not Seers for like, Lotus Field. Control, where you want to look at their opponent's hand, get rid of the counter spells, do stuff like that. We also have a, an extra Ulamog and a World Breaker and Emrakul, which is kind of interesting because I don't know when you're actually swapping these out. Like, is there a scenario where you want to cut the Emrakul and play two Ulamogs? So I am a little kind of uh, curious about that. Um, because Ulamog, World Breaker, I get World Breaker. Because it is, you know, a different type of threat. But an additional Ulamog in Emrakul. I don't know what matchups are you want, like, two Emrakul or two Ulamogs. So, I'm curious to see how that actually... If the deck creator is here, um, he could put his insight on this. The other thing that I'm, I think could be a little interesting is we do play two Shrines, two Sanctums, and two Arches and two Nykthos. I do actively wonder if this deck could get a single Cavern of Souls. So maybe you could tutor it up um, and make it where your Eldrazi are uncountable or your Elementals are uncountable, right? Because those typically, it looks like your only two creatures that you really want to resolve. Other than whatever uh, Cityscape Leveler is, it's probably a Construct. I would fight with this gas here. I don't know. But that seems to be, you know, the list. So, what deck do you guys like the most? Uh, I, I maybe I want to look into uh, his ramp package a little bit more, compare it against mine. Um, there's a lot of overlap, but I definitely still play Carrieded. I play the Glimpse. I play the Archmage's Charm. Um, I have cut back on how many non-green sources I play. So he plays a lot more than I do, because I'm worried about potentially you know not being able to cast Archmage's Charm on turn two. Also, I play Arbial Grazer. He does not. So I'm kind of curious to see how all that, all that difference is. So that is the sixth list that I have for you today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. So make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, hit that bell notification before you head out that door. And until next time, hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day. Talk to you soon.